we grow to what we're doing today. Just community development, community building, let's hang out, grow food, come and go as you please, no worries. Black Futures Farm is us working as a cooperative to grow and sell food to our community. Um, we just signed up for a 25 member CSA. It's going to be $28 a week. Somebody Welcome back, y'all. On the Deer Path with Ashi, episode number three, March 1st, 2020. We're out here at Black Futures Farm. And we're hanging out with chickweed at the moment. Here's a nice stand of chickweed that's kind of taking over this little tuft of berm underneath some evergreen and shrubs leading over there to the Black Future Farm. And, oh, hold up. Who's this? <laughs> Brother Malcolm, is that you? Hey, good thing. Malcolm. And who? Oh, who's this? Oh, me? Brother Forrest. Hello. Hey, good to see you. Oh, oh, hi there, beautiful. It's good, Ashi. It's Sasha, isn't it? Yeah. Mm hmm. We're over here at Black Futures Farm. Oh, we are. Oh, we are. Shit. There we are. Black Futures. Yeah. Woo, Black Futures. Woo! <laughs> All power to the people. <laughs> All power. So I was hoping, Brother Malcolm, you could take us on a little introductory yeah. walk around the Black Futures Farm. Let's do it. Yeah. So Black Futures Farm is located at 6745 Southeast 60th Street, 60, uh, an area also known as uh, Felony Flats, um, the, otherwise known as the Brentwood Darlington neighborhood, which is... Um, What's the word you used earlier, brother? Uh, food apartheid. It's currently under food apartheid where people don't have access. Brother Kwele with the, the djembe. Uh, where people don't have access to fresh vegetables and fruits. So it's fortuitous that we get to be here because um, we can help address some of that gap. This is the former um, Bufa site, a program ran through OSU Extension, which is the beginning urban farmers and agricultural program. So people could come here and pay some money to learn how to grow food and be farmers. Um, my mentors, Art and Shante, from Mud Bone Grown, started learning to grow here. Um, so it's really cool. It's come around full circle back into the hands of the people. Um, Black Food Sovereignty Council, which is the which uh, Black, Black Futures Farm is a program of BFSC, got um, we have title to this land for the next five years at least, and so we decided that we were going to start plant start where we were planted start a farm here and um, under the leadership of a group of folks um, which we hope to grow we're starting a cooperative enterprise here to address food sovereignty for black people um, and to build a workers cooperative from this from this from this land and from this ground and build naturally um, towards a much bigger and more effective group of folks addressing one another's needs so let's take a walk yeah let's be on a deer path what's up Laquita How are you? hey you okay being filmed? I am, yeah. Hey, hey everybody. this is Laquita. How's it going? Oh. Are we live? We are live. Okay. We're on the deer path together. So this is the eastern half of our, this is the eastern or the eastern direction eastern. of our um, farm um, to the south of us. Is that south? Or this is That's east? west. West. That's west. So this, this is the west is end. Yeah. To the south end is um, 58th Street. Oh. So you could look, people could locate us. Um, to the north is um, 60th Street and the Brentwood Darlington Park and Lane Middle School. And then to the north end, I guess, is the east end is um, the rest of the farm in our back border. So we're on a little more than. A little more than an acre. Yeah, we're on a little more than an acre. How much of that is in cultivation? Um, so not to speak. very much. Yeah. Like probably a thousand square feet. Okay. Here's Lucas. Hey, Program Lucas. Manager. We're live. Hi, right on. <laughs> yeah. We're on. Uh, I was just gonna pick some leeks and pass them around. I offered you some. Yeah, please. Some home? Yeah. Cool. We yeah. love leeks. Yeah. yeah. Always take a leak. You know. Thanks, Lucas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lucas was a key partner in us getting this land. He was a partner and a champion from the very beginning. Like, okay. yeah, you should give it to them. Right. So this was not in use. Um, was it through learning gardens? Partially. Partially. Uh, 
partially. He mm -hmm. is, um, yeah, he is a member of the PSU team that has stewardship over this property. Here's our busted down storage house. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to get these hoop houses back together. I actually planned to skin these today, okay. but we had a water emergency. That's not cool. happening. Let's make sure we get those yarrow out of there and uh, yeah. repot those yarrow when it's their time to yeah. come out. Some nice little spring yarrow in there. Right. Nice in the garden. So okay. the former occupant gave us almost all of his old materials. Wow. So we have a lot of infrastructure here that we need to put in. We have irrigation, we have hoses, we have a bunch of seeds. Now I noticed you laid, uh, there's like a lot of uh, wood chips down here. Why did you do that? So we just want to establish our pathways. Yeah. So we could talk, we could, we could see clearly where we want to put stuff into cultivation. So our, our vision is where there's not a pathway, there'll be food, herbs, or flowers grown. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So none of this is going to be lawn like it is now. When we are in full swing, all this, will, all of this will be growing something that is useful. Herbs, flowers, medicinal herbs, vegetables, something. It'll yeah. Aromatics, stuff for the bees, pollinators, it will all be in use. We don't want to have any space that's just hanging out and not not serving a purpose yeah mm. so like this is gonna get cultivated mm -hmm. as well yep and then so from because i was talking with sasha earlier but like I'm pointing out like i think this is ours or this, it's, is, this is all ours oh okay so what mm -hmm. we want is we want people who are medicine workers you know herbalists people to want to grow food for their families we want everybody to come and take part we need a communal voice if you are black you are welcome Mm -hmm. If you are black, you are welcome. Yeah. Okay, I want to say that. If you are black, you are, you are welcome. welcome. You are welcome. wanted, welcome. wanted, welcome, needed, and accepted. Yes. You know, we want we want all of our people to come here and to be together and to love on each other and to meet one another and to be in community. Mm -hmm. This is not a space where you are not welcome. This is this is yours. And the whole pur purpose of, ha of us having this is to welcome and to build community here. So... That's, this is what it is. It's not uh, a me thing. This is us. This is for us. You know, I'm honored to kind of stand in the road and be able to direct people and, and share resources. Um, we had MLK, kind of an inaugural MLK Day event here. Um, it was open to all people, so we had about 125 people show up and just put in the work and help us lay these pathways. So this is some where somebody wanted to come and volunteer, and they don't really know what to do. You know, you're more than welcome to help us, you know, weed the pathways, continue to lay this bark. This is going to be an ongoing thing. We want to build this up so that these are, you know, more or less permanent. Um, uh, we have, I think there's like over 12 varieties of fruit trees just on our little plot right here. We're going to be able to leverage those fruit trees. There's figs, apples, pears, mm. Chinese, um, so Chinese apples. Figs over there. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. There's uh, grapevines. Mm -hmm. We just brought in some blueberries. Mm -hmm. um, what else is here? I forget. There's a bunch. Mm -hmm. So we hope to grow, we're going to be growing melons here. We're going to grow okra. We're going to grow beans, corn, peas, collards. Black Futures Farm, man. Black yeah. Futures. Black Futures mm -hmm. Farm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. Founded on the principle that we can do it for ourselves. That's right. Mm -hmm. We can provide for ourselves, mm -hmm. and we're doing that here, mm -hmm. you know. What are some of the things that, you know, some of the ways that you're able to engage in the community, say with the work parties and stuff like that, where you're seeing that dream come alive? Okay, so every Sunday is for We Grow, which is a black-only time, but I'm here every other day of the week, um, welcoming volunteers. We had some volunteers come yesterday. Every third Saturday, uh, and we'll be putting our calendar up pretty soon, every third Saturday is an open volunteer day. Which means that anybody from any community, white, black, brown, rich, poor, whatever, otherwise can come in, lend a hand, and help us bring this forward. Mm -hmm. um, and I welcome all people to come. Understanding that this is black-led um, and black-run. Now, a lot of people are watching from all over the country and world and wondering about, is this Portland, Oregon? Yo, we're in Portland, Oregon, son. Yeah. We're yeah. in Portland. <laughs> it's the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> How we is this here. happening in Portland? We out here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's Black love in Portland. Yeah. Do you think that other cities that, you know, 
you know, aren't that are more diverse, where it's every kind of person everywhere that there's, and it's, you know, there should be kind of like black affinity farms mm. everywhere. Yeah, I think so. I yeah. think that all people, whoever your people are, whatever your community is, whether you re- identify racially or in terms of your gender identity or whatever it is, like you have to find your people now is a really hard time to be in this world. And mm. I think that we have to find our own whoever you identify as your own and be loved by them and love those people Mm -hmm. and growing food together is a very practical way to put in work, to build community, to get to know people, to take leadership, to, to learn, to, it it provides opportunity for all things, you know, and um, black people definitely need it. You know, we have a a negative, many of us have a negative association with the land due to slavery, Mm -hmm. you know, because we were forced to work it for 246 years. And then another 154 years of legalized apartheid where we were, you know, forced to do this work. So we lost, many of us, including myself, lost the knowledge that we came from the land. We came to the Americas. We were brought to the Americas because we were the these excellent agriculturalists. It's actually in us. We've been doing this for millions of years, mm-hmm. you know, and this is where our restoration is. Malcolm said land is power. You don't have a revolution without land. Hmm. So let's take a let's let's assume stewardship of the land because you can't own it, mm-hmm. but you can steward it. Yes, you, mm-hmm. can. you know, we have a five year lease here of stewardship mm-hmm. and I want to work to make this place as productive and as healthy as possible, not just for the human beings, but for the for all the plants, for the animals that live in the soil, for everything. Mm-hmm. You know, we're going to have some beehives out here. We want this to be a, a model of regenerative agriculture, mm-hmm. of community building, of community development. Mm-hmm. Thus the name Black Futures Farm. Yeah. Before we move on on our walk, can um uh, take a second to hear from our uh fellow black people over here? Yeah, yeah. Wh- why? Well, Sunday has been a beautiful experience coming together. So mm-hmm. this needs to happen in any every way possible. Yeah. So come out cuz you are welcome and it feels good to be out in the fresh air and supporting each other. Skill sharing is what we need more of. Mm-hmm. So we have to come mm-hmm. together to do that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Show up and bring what you have. Mm-hmm. Thanks yeah. for those oranges. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks for bringing life. Um, hi, y'all out there in the world. My name is Laquita. Um, I go by Q. And um, yeah, today is pretty, pretty awesome. I am committed. I committed, recommitted myself several times. I started working the land about, oh my God, almost 10 years ago. When I moved back to Portland in 2014, I came across some folks that were you know on a journey of healing and that's where the journey that I was embarking with my health um, had some challenges come up and I had just my family's from Central America and again when we speak about you know what those indigenous practices are for us to heal Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to be someone in my family to continue that sort of journey Mm -hmm. Um, because I had not been able to experience from when I was Growing up, we bought stuff from the grocery store, had no understanding where my food was coming from Mm -hmm. until I went to Central America and saw the first farmer's market. But even then, when I was 14, 15 years old, I still didn't get it because my first 10 years in in uh, in on this planet, I was in America. So and we were living in uh, food deserts and places that didn't have healthy food, which, again, when we speak about disease, things that trigger us is because of our DNA or we're, we have a lot of deficiencies. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we live in a in a beautiful a beautiful state, but there's not a lot of sunshine. Mm-hmm. So when we are able to come together and when we're feeling like, you know, not in tuned or out mm-hmm. in balance, most That's of right. it's because of the deficiencies that is dormant in our bodies and mm-hmm. then something comes up. And so growing was something that I was excited to do. I did it with the Urban League of Portland. Um, they had a community garden in Northeast Portland, and you helped mm-hmm. me came to that land. And I was really like, oh, like the words that I had not been familiar with, like food justice, food sovereignty, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you know, in that way, because I'm around academics, but like you That's said, right. skill, 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 skill sharing, sharing mm-hmm. and social justice in a movement. Right. I was like, yeah, I'm about this. So mm-hmm. we cre- I created that space for anyone who wanted to come out. Um, we would just do it like maybe every other month mm-hmm. and have some really great turnout. I remember seeing my first tomatoes grow and be like, oh, my God, mm-hmm. and crying. And to the day, to this day, the garden is still 
operating. Um, so that's beautiful. And for those who are, you know, wherever you're at today, if you can pull your community together, you know, and, 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 and do it, like you said, the future, this is like where we're looking into the future. We hear about climate justice and, you know, our land being destroyed and water, like not having water rights and things like this. But like Brother Malcolm said, we are stewards of this land. We That's are right. stewards of this whole entire planet. Mm -hmm. So it's our responsibility to get yeah. back to it. Okay. To get back to, to, it. to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm always really mm -hmm. blessed to have, you know, great people like Malcolm and Shantae Johnson and Arthur Shaver. Um, to have stepping and Eddie Eddie Hill to have stepping out on a limb mm -hmm. and you know fight for what's ours That's in right. this city. So mm -hmm. yeah, I appreciate Thank you giving me some time. Yeah. And community is so important. Like it's, it's so important that people hear from you and hear from fear from us about what's going on here and mm -hmm. how they re you know can relate. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And as black people, right, or melanated people, we. Mm -hmm. um, we're here, we often say, man, we, it's the whitest state in America. That's what people are known for, like you said, Portland. But when we get together, it's just like... That energy of the sun is, yeah. is back with us, yeah. I feel like. Mm -hmm. Being from Texas, I miss the sun all the time. But whenever we come together, I still heat it. I'm yeah. like, oh, let me take this layer off so mm -hmm. quickly, you know? Mm -hmm. It is, it's our energy. <laughs> so we got to come out for that. Yeah. <laughs> and then the sun came out for us today, too. Yeah, like, definitely. <laughs> we out here. Yeah. It's, it's a little chilly, but That's you know... Right. <laughs> That's what we're doing. Oh, we, we, got we got the yellow. We got the sunshine. Right idea. We got Queen B in the house. Queen right. B, baby. <laughs> yeah, we stay popping out here. We, we don't let it slip. No, and I'm, and I'm just really excited that I, like this is gonna be the farm to be at this summer. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, yeah. We have a bunch of you know we were at the food bank a couple years mm -hmm. ago and did my melanin is popping market day mm -hmm. and that was. It was popping. Yeah. Bring yeah. That's yeah. Right. Where, where the people at? Mm -hmm. <laughs> follow the people. Mm -hmm. Forrest, would you like to say a few words to the good people on the deer path? Uh, I'm just here to learn and to be of good use to the master mm -hmm. uh, and to honor my, my mother and my father. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The most high. Yeah. Allah. All right. Yeah. Thank cool. You. Thank you, Forrest. So we're going to continue on the deer path here with Brother Malcolm. Yeah. Black Futures Farm. Yeah. If you're just joining us, thank you for coming and welcome. We're taking a tour of Black Futures Farm. Yeah, so this is our field. Uh, we're going to put this field into cultivation first. It's, we were going to um, just turn the soil a little bit this week. Uh, we're going towards a low-till model. Low-till. But because we have all this um, green matter in here, we're going to just come in here. And do a very light till. Mm -hmm. um, probably this may be the only time we ever do it. Mm -hmm. um, just to build up the soil and turn up, fluff it up a little bit. So hopefully Thursday we'll be able to come over here and do it. Um, and how are you going to do that? You're going to use a walk behind tractor? Yeah, we have a BCS tractor. BCS, okay. My brother's coming with the BCS to run through here. Cool. Um, when folks come out and they'll see once we do our planting, we're packing everything in very tight. It's not going to be just like conventional rows and pathways. Okay. Um, it'll be more like blocks, uh, more of a Japanese style planting. Oh, okay. Uh, so there'll be collard greens and corn here. Well, collard greens first. We're gonna plant about 500 collard green plants. You said 500. 500, yep. Mm-hmm. Um, last year at right. Simpson, I planted 117. Mm-hmm. Um, that did extraordinarily well. So this time I wanna have four times that. Uh, mm-hmm. Because we hope to just we hope to do a lot with our greens, especially you know we we want to. Uh, I have a, a relationship with with Ethiopian restaurant here. He said that he'll buy our greens. Okay. Um, I brokered a deal the other day with the senior home. Where they want to buy vegetables from us. Mm -hmm. uh, Great. So you're building those relationships, those business relationships, yeah. personally. Yeah. 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 I'm getting out there. I mean, we're gonna have a lot of produce, and I want to make sure that. We represent ourselves well, and we make this sustainable. I don't want to have a bunch of grants. You know, I want to build this on actual commerce that we do hand-to-hand, -hand, mm -hmm. business-to-business, mm -hmm. mutually supportive of one another. Right. You know, there's the Ethiopian restaurant. There's a Brazilian family that owns these senior homes. Like, this is community doing business with community. Yeah. Yeah. That's black economy. It's amazing. Yeah, it is. Yeah, right. It is. And actually, the middle class, the black middle class in Brazil is the fastest growing black middle class in the whole world right now. Interesting. Yeah. The black middle class in Brazil? In Brazil, yep. Mm, Brazil's got a lot of uh, construction industry yep. and 
a lot of oil too now. Yeah, black people are getting it together. And it's because the black people in Brazil determined that they were going to do business with one another. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and they were going to lift each other up. So people are actually living in the favelas and still converting, you know, that income cooperatively into more. They're multiplying it within the favelas and within the communities working class and, and, and middle class communities in, in Brazil and they're moving themselves out of poverty. Mm -hmm. That sounds like real mobility right With Little there. to no government assistance. Right. You know? Right. With their own arms and legs. With their own arms and legs. Their own two hands and feet. You know, as a community. Mm hmm So that's, that's what we're... So that's this plot? Yes. So we have all the way back to this... I don't know if folks can see it. All the way. There's a... Mm -hmm. We have, a, like I said, a little over an acre, so there's a back fence there. Okay. We want to so use as much of this as possible. We're going to have a whole fungi, fungi corridor in the back. Okay. Um, we apply for a grant to build a composting toilet um, that will be able to uh, recapture the manure um, and the urine and nitrogen and then use that for fertilizer, not on the food. Um, but on the herbs and flowers, certainly. Right, right, right. Um, Good. So you're composting. Yep. Uh, in the few black futures, innovative compost. Yeah. Human or people get with it. <laughs> yeah. So that I mean, I don't know if folks have questions or. Do folks have questions? I'm getting a lot of love and support, and welcome and highs and. This is great. Oh, I'm scrolling down now. Y'all giving me the chills. This is. <clears throat> Thank you so much for your comments. If anybody has questions, uh, Malcolm. Oh, yeah. Uh, Lanita asks, collard trees? Oh, tree collards? Yeah, we'll be planting those. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, collards for the apocalypse. He said 500 plants. Yeah. Probably some trees, too. That's forever. That's forever. <laughs> That's collards forever. Should we see over there, too? Yeah, let's go. There's a couple plots in cultivation over there, right? Yep. Okay, yeah. For the, uh, so they're using the coffee bags here. And uh we tried it for weed suppression but it's not good because yeah. you know, they let too much light through. Right, right. So this was here so in comparison, if you see this was this was black plastic though. Okay, this was like a silage tarp, black plastic. Yeah, and we just pulled that up two weeks ago. Yeah, you can see and you see what happens is like the, the ink from the coffee bag came off. It's and it's still like turf. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. still like soddy. Yep. Over there. So there's a difference. So that's Whereas this is the black tarp the and there's not good for weed suppression, but they do make great landscaping. Right. 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 Yeah. This is black plastic. Oh, okay. Yeah, black plastic did a lot better job. It's still you're the most resilient dandelion coming through. We yeah. love them. Uh, Lenita's asking as well. Lenita was here, by the way. She loves, oh. she misses her Portland people, and she's asking, uh, any other trees going in? Uh, well, we got blueberries, bushes. Um, I don't know if we're going to plant more fruit trees. Just got a donation of blueberry bushes today. Yeah, we have only two part-time arborists for the couple hundred fruit trees that are here. Right, there's the fig. Yeah. Um... So before we put any any more mature trees in, I want to see what all we have leveraged already on the property. So right. There's quite a, like, this whole row is fruit trees. That whole back is fruit trees. Okay. Um, fruit trees, fruit trees. Fruit trees, fruit trees, fruit trees. So we'll see what happens with that. Yeah. And then there's this plot here. Yep. So this is, I think, where we're going to put in corn. Corn. Corn might go here. Okay. It's a nice round. And we're gonna punch this out. This all is the way. okay. So this is maybe 25, 30 by 40, 50, something yeah. like that. We're gonna punch this all the way out to here. Okay. Yeah. So this field will be from the pathway all the way here to this edge. Okay. Yeah. You're gonna. It's almost another third or almost half of it. Yeah. It's gonna be doubled. All corn. Looks like all corn. Like double. What's this right here? Yeah. Uh, grapevine. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Or some grapes over here. Yep. Um. When did those start blooming? Uh, yeah. Well, they're gonna put on a lot of leaves by June or so, and all summer put on leaves. So grapes are gonna show up mid late summer. And then to probably. End. Um, that's my. And there's another plot over here that's got black plastic. Yeah, this is the We Grow plot. This is We Grow, another a collaborative organization of black folks growing food and community. 
yeah, right here. What's up, chick meat? Yeah. Yeah. All the food is goes back to them. Yep. Probably in here is going to be where our wash and pack station is. Okay. So I'll just I'll just zoom out so folks can see yeah. the area. Okay. So we got over there is the greenhouse, and then right here the wash and pack station. Wash and pack right here, um, and a wash and pack is a like a kind of like a food washing and cutting station, so you can mm -hmm. be presentable for, for market. Right, right. And speaking um, of market, um, how are you getting your food to market? Oh, thank you for asking. Yeah. So we have the Black Futures Farm CSA. Uh, we're gonna have sign ups at the Pack Sack Fair March twenty second. Um, we're gonna take twenty five families. Uh, you will get a food box if you have SNAP. Or you have WIC, or you have the Senior Dollars. I forget what that program was called. Mm -hmm. um, you'll be able to apply that towards the cost of your um, your CSA. But if you have no assistance, the cost of CSA is one hundred and twelve dollars a month. Mm -hmm. um, and for that one hundred and twelve dollars a month, you're probably it's going to be between about the equivalent of maybe almost three hundred dollars worth of groceries. Um, they're going to be really packed boxes. You'll be able to pick them up here at Black Futures Farm, 6745 okay. Southeast 60th. Okay. If you're in the Brentwood Darlington neighborhood, we're arranging to have that food delivered. Um, and we don't want it to be a barrier. So if you have low mobility and you're interested in participating, we will get your box to you. You don't have to worry about it. Mm. Um, we're also creating a farmer's market here um, of BIPOC farmers and low-income people because we want people to be able to build community and have fun. Like, you know, we, And we want to provide fresh food to folks. Yeah, so you're going to pop up a market right mm -hmm. here. Right here. Be right here in the parking lot. Right here in the parking lot. If you can't do it here, it'll be across the street at the Brentwood Darlington Center. Yeah, that's at right. At 7211 Southeast 60th Street. Yeah, so folks that know Portland, we're in outer southeast, just west of Lentz, just east of Woodstock a little bit, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Not that far away from Reed. Yeah. So is this year two for Black Futures Farm? This is year one for Black Futures Farm. This okay. is year two for Malcolm Hoover yeah. and uh, our two farmers, Kwame Bay and Jake Sowers. Right, right, which are veteran farmers. Yeah, so all three of us are veterans. Yeah, also, you are as well. Yes. Eddie Hill, mm -hmm. Army vet. I'm the lone Navy vet with three Army vets. Right. Um, and so, you know, it's a lot of combined efforts. It's the Boots mm -hmm. to Roots program mm -hmm. coming into a second year. It is... The first year of Black Futures Farm is We Grow. It is a community and collaborative effort. It all, you know, under the mentorship of Art and Shantae from My Bone Grown. Shout out to Art and Shantae. Art and Shantae, you know. if you are watching or you're watching this later, we are sending all of our love to yeah. you for holding us down. Shout out to Letty. Shout out to, to Shiny. And Pathways to Farming yeah. Program. Yeah, shout out to the brother Ashi. Sochi. <laughs> yeah, shout out to all the people who get down in, with the, in the land, mm -hmm. you know, to grow food for the people. Um, it's a blessing. I'm having a time of my life, you know. Wow. Who knew at 49 years old I was going to reinvent myself and become a farmer? Can y'all believe this face is 49? Personally, I think this month is lying. <laughs> I think this man's lying. Give but, thanks. You know. I got too much youth, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm every minute of I think if you say, old. if you say, hey, like for me, if I said, hey, I'm 60, <laughs> everyone's going to be, oh, wow, you look so young. So I think you're actually like probably younger than me. I'm 107. Man. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this is what black futures and black farming can look like. It's beautiful. Yeah. So come on out. Help us get this land in shape. Um, and we have a greenhouse, which is the other thing. It's currently flooded or flooding. Right. <laughs> but we have one. Speak of the angel, Eddie Hill. Is that the one? Eddie! Wild one! Come say hi before we, come say hi before we end this broadcast. <laughs> Here comes Edward Hill. The angel himself. <laughs> what's up, brother? Yo, what up, what up? We're live on the One TV oh. network. Oh, what's up, y'all? Yeah. What's up, y'all? How you doing? Just representing oh, Portland. Hey, what's up? Yo, oh. do you want to say anything? I know you just got here, but we got cut like three more minutes left. Do you want to say anything? Black people, people on Savvy Island farming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 2020. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and tell them about uh, Black Food Serving Council. Bro, hey, thanks. I'm going to go check out our greenhouse. Thank you, Malcolm. Hopefully the maintenance person is here. Catch you next time on the Deer Path. Yeah, man. Thank you for the opportunity to share with the people. Much love. Bless love. Some folks that yeah. I know was on that 
on my on that live too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey sis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you tagged Hi, me. Mom. Like, <laughs> yeah. Good to see you. <laughs> I know Lenita was saying she she's got uh she's hoping that you can come through to the One Network too and okay. and you know maybe you wanna do your own thing because you know you got a lot to do. I got a lot to do. Yeah. Okay, so this is the family. I'm gonna wrap it up and. uh I want to thank y'all for joining me on A Deer Path one more time. Again, mm -hmm. this has been uh, uh, On A Deer Path with Ashi, Black Futures Farm. All, right. All these beautiful people. Yeah. Black farmers. Black farmers, Portland, Oregon. Um, this was episode number three, March 1st. Happy 2020. Yeah. Much love and gratitude. And remember to catch us uh, first and third Sundays on the One TV Network. The One. Much love.